I'm Logan Radio Rocks, and guess what? You're not. I am sitting here moments before this guy right here takes the stage. This is my friend. I have known this person for longer than both of us would like to admit to. You're about to take this stage right here. This is Mikey Wayne, the official Mikey Wayne, if you're looking on Instagram. Mikey, how you doing today, man? Dude, I am fantastic. All right. So, Mikey Wayne, you're on this tour with Aaron Lewis, but you've been on this tour with Aaron Lewis before, but now you're opening up. How'd you get the gig, man? Dude, I, I always tell this to people, like, surround yourself with good people, right? And I'll say this on stage tonight. Surround yourself with good people, take care of those people, because you never know when some of that good is going to come back around, right? Yep. So I had a good buddy, front of house engineer, who has mixed for one of my old bands, and uh, he knows Aaron's production manager. So, and we were just kind of coming out of COVID, right? Yep. And I, I had just gone solo. My last band, we all kind of went our own ways right around COVID and everything. So, you know, I'm sitting at home trying to figure out the solo thing. Yeah, right? And um, New venture. I get a call from my buddy who used to mix for me. That's how it works, by the way. It's networking. Yeah, it's all networking. It's all networking. He's sitting on his couch going, I wish somebody would call. And then they call. This is how stories get yeah. told. But no, I, uh, he goes, dude, he goes, Aaron Lewis needs a guitar tech and a stage manager. Boom. And I was like, all right, well, I got nothing else going on right now. You know, I'm just writing songs and trying to get back out on the road. So he thought it'd be a good idea for me to get back out here, yeah. get out of the house, get, you know, get out of my head kind of thing, get right. back on the road. Even if I'm not performing, you know, it doesn't matter, man. I just, I love, the, I love music. I love the lifestyle being around creatives yes. also yes. i moved out to las vegas to be around creatives like myself because if you just sit there and you're by yourself no matter you could be the most creative person in the world van gogh cut his own ear off okay because he wasn't around other creative people you need to be around other creative yeah people. absolutely absolutely man so it's been cool getting out here tech in yeah i've been it, it was actually a year ago last week uh, one year it's amazing how much life can change in one Seriously, year. he was guitar teching. Now, I'm, I'm assuming you're still doing a little bit of guitar teching. Oh, though, yeah, right? man. Yeah. But it's it's added this really cool dynamic to the show that I think is really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 we load in during the day, and I set the stage and tune the guitars and change the strings, and I love all of that. I wouldn't change any of it. Right. And then I put on a different hat, grab my guitar, go out there, perform. Yo, I just played my first... Not one, not two, but three arenas. Yo, he's an arena rock guy now. I know an arena rock pro. Yo. It's crazy. You know how, like, how much of my life I have dreamt about. And I saw you, by the way, I saw you, I saw you taking the crowd and working the crowd. Yo, bro, I watched that video. If you haven't seen that video, go to Instagram and you'll watch a kid giddy like he was in a candy shop just going, hey, mom, look what I can do with the crowd. It was awesome to see, man. Dude, thank you, man. That's And honestly, those kind of venues, they like the bigger the venue, the bigger the crowd, the less nervous I am. Yeah. Like give me a house concert. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm a wreck, right? Give me an arena, and I just like turn into a kid, and I'm just like, yeah, I love you, and I love you, and let's kick ass. <laughs> well, half of you has to be like, I can't believe I'm here. No, like you have to be, dude. you have to be literally flow, flying above yourself for most of the show, going, wow, I can't see three in out, but I know that there's a lot of oh, people yeah, here. Yeah. That's the thing most people don't realize. Like you can only see maybe the first two, three rows, right? That's it. Because the lights are so blinded. But man, there was one moment in all of those shows. I, I get the crowd clapping and whatever, and the the lighting guy turned on the the crowd blinders. And all of a sudden, I could see everybody. It's like, this is better than I could have ever imagined. And you're instantly reminded of it's not you in those first couple rows. Yeah. It's not you at, at your friend's barbecue. It's yeah. not you on the beach, you know, yeah. strumming a guitar, telling your friends, hey, man, I just wrote this really cool song. You guys should check it out. Yeah. It's you on a stage opening up for Aaron Lewis. And that's when, like, that whole thing, you know, doing the getting people on the left to yell and the right and in the back. Like you're not that's the, you're not just working the first three rows. You've got to work the whole room. Yeah. You know, even though I'm one guy on stage, 
Like, I have to hold everybody's attention. So you have to engage all those people, you know? Especially as the opener, right? Because you're there to make your name felt. Like, they came to see, no offense, but they're here to see Aaron. But then when you when they leave, they're like, yo, did you see Mikey Wayne? Oh, my God, we got to get a T-shirt. We got to get a CD. What's his Instagram, right? How do you, how do you make sure you do that? Dude, I mean, I just call it out from the stage every night. I'm like, you just... Just like you would in a club or whatever coming up in those right? days. You just, you know, follow me here. Go check this out. And, dude, it's been the coolest thing to get off stage. And then, I'll, like, I'll do the transition and get Aaron's guitarist ready and all that. And then I'll open up my phone, and it's just, bam, all these new followers. It's amazing. It's just the coolest feeling in the world, dude, to know that you're not just playing, but people are actually engaging yeah. and reacting, and they like what you do, you know? It's like you always... You always have a feeling deep down that you know it's going to work, but you don't know how, you don't know when, you they don't know really why. They really like me. They and really then, do, and right? All of you need that sometimes. Happens, yes. And you're like, wow, how did this happen? Right? But it's all those little pieces every single day. You got to show up. You got to show up and you got to keep showing up until something happens. Yo, Lemmy from Motorhead said you can be playing the best effing song in front, in front of uh, the best effing crowd but if the right person's not there to hear it it doesn't matter so you got to keep doing it and and we talk i talk about that follow your dreams it's not going to be easy no. but it will pay off 100 percent. 100 percent. i'm living proof y'all it's pretty cool so am i now they're literally they're literally coming in here so we've only got a a few more questions here yeah look but at that. we got people behind. we got actual people coming in there you can't see them but they're there uh, <laughs> all right Let's talk about acoustic guitar real quick. Okay. Who's the greatest acoustic guitar uh, performer out there? Ever. Dude. Yeah, I know. Great question. No one asked that Man. question. All right. I mean, this one's kind of obvious, but it's obvious for a reason. It's so true. Dude, John Mayer. Oh, it is. You know what? Correct. Dude. You know what? You're absolutely correct. Our next Eric Clapton is John Mayer. Welcome to the party. Dude. Also, I'll give, a, I'll give a, uh, some props to, um, oh, man, what's the redhead kid from London? Oh, uh, you know I'm Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Yeah, I'm sorry. We'll edit that one out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ed, Dude. he loves your stuff, I no, swear. Actually, <laughs> I, I've been thinking about, actually, those two guys a lot lately. I'm a fan of both. I've been thinking about them a lot, like going back and critiquing my shows. I video every show oh, so yeah. I can see where I messed up. Whatever. And you're supposed to do that, kids. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary to watch yourself, but you have to do that in order to grow. But it's cool. I... I you know, John Mayer just he's actually I think doing right now that solo acoustic yep. tour making more money than he's ever made in the history of his own existence which is pretty much saying that he's probably making more money than most people out uh, in their existence but it's like I try to kind of look at those guys and what they're doing because they're on by themselves on a stage in front of that many people so how do I do that as well you one know? of the coolest things John Mayer ever did was open up for himself solo opening up for his trio act which then opened up for his full band act he changed watches in between each and every single uh, set but that is that hey that's John Mayer just being Johnny Mayer by the way yeah. just being hey I'm here I finally got here let's play some guitar man all right what is the first thing you miss about tour when you're back home off of tour? Dude, honestly, uh, it's my bunk. Weird. I, a lot of guys don't like sleeping in a bunk. I always bunk It's weird. Head. You get like claustrophobic or whatever, right? I absolutely love it. Peace and it's quiet, like, solitude? What's the deal? I, so I grew up camping, right, okay. with my parents. And we had an RV. And I just, it just reminds me of that. It brings up great childhood memories and you know, it's that little wholesome feeling kind of thing. You know, I, you know what? I just love it. I, all right. You know what? The, I can the, respect that. The sound of the generator and the rock of the road. I, I, dude, I love that. You know what? There, you should write a song about it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to need a point on that, but you, yeah, okay, you write okay, that okay. song. Okay. No, the other thing, man, is like, you know, you really miss your, your, your family and friends right. when you're out here. Right. And you're happy to be home and see them. But we're out here so much on this tour. I mean, I think we're doing almost 200 dates this year. Right? He's like a wrestler, kids. <laughs> so this becomes like another family yeah, in itself. So you miss yes. your buds, right? Even when we're back in Nashville, we all like it's you know we'll go we'll get some rest, and then like the next day it'll be like, hey, what are y'all doing? Let's go hang out. Like we really don't take a break from each other. And you know what? That's a great tour because they talk about family. And you know what? Some tours are not. By the way, I've seen them. We won't talk about them. They're out there. 
But some tours are all about family. Our tours, nothing but family. From the top to the bottom, from Aaron to her management to the production crew, you know, musicians. Like, Actually, dude, to be honest with you, Aaron just casually came over to say hi, and it was so casual that I forgot that he was Aaron. No, that's the way it is, you know? It really was. I was like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. He's, he's a good dude, man. He's treated me well. So. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, look, kids, if you want to be something, visualize yourself doing that thing, then go out, grab it by the, the cojones and do it and take it and say, I'm going to do this. Mikey Wayne right here made it happen for himself. You can make it happen for yourself. And I got two more questions. One. Well, let's go back to that. Yeah. Real quick. Go after it with all your might. Right. But. Don't expect a straight road. You might have a plan. Yeah, that's true. But nine to, I've never had a plan go the way that I wanted it to, and that's okay. Just duck and jive, bob and weave, yes. but always just keep going. Abs you know what? Absolutely. You have to show up. You have to be there, and you have to be consistently there. And that is half of the battle right there. Now, I'm sponsored by G Fuel. If they were going to make a Mikey Wayne flavor, what flavor would it be? Oh, man. Good question. Because I, I will go for s'mores. Dude, s'mores is the most unnatural flavor. Like, you can't find s'mores out there in, the, in nature. But boy, man, do we all sit by a campfire and go, hey, man, want to have some s'mores? I would say I'm actually, I'm kind of on this uh, creamsicle kick right now. Ooh. Right? Orange vanilla yes. kind of thing, right? Yeah. Love orange creamsicle. Yeah. Like, um, I could drink that all day. All right. Absolutely. And this is the last question, and I like to ask this to everybody. After all these years... What's that one thing that nags you right before you go to sleep that you can talk Ooh. about? Music related or yeah, anything related? Something about your career, something, something that, that, when, that tells a story of who you are and how you got here. Because, you know, that one thing that, that not necessarily you could change, but that one thing you think about before you, before you close your eyes and go off to sleep. Man, I, so I'm always in my head, and I actually... <laughs> Man, I have to take stuff to knock me out to go to sleep. It's, it's that creative. So it's not really so much as a, a critique. It's like it's the creative brain, right? Mm -hmm. It's always kicking around either. I can be so exhausted, and then I lay down, and all of a sudden I'm starting to write a song in my head. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, there's so many times where I get up out of bed, and I used to put my phone across the room yeah. so, to make me, because I'm not a morning person. I used to put my phone across so the room, but I always had to get up in the middle of the night, go across the room to like record the little voice memo or whatever. I still put a piece of paper and a pen next <laughs> yeah. to my bed, but I'm telling jokes. He's writing songs a little <laughs> bit different. But now it's like it's a it's a, a combination of you know writing songs or kind of going over what I nagging myself of what I did wrong. That one word that I messed up on stage or the one story that. Maybe I didn't phrase the right way and it didn't land. And then, you know, I'm in my head yep. going, oh, the audience probably thought I was an idiot and I didn't know what I was talking about, you know. And but they, in reality, they, they, don't, they don't care. They were rooting for you. They were yeah, right there with you. You know what? They're, they're having drinks. They're having adult beverages. They're enjoying themselves. All right, look, let's end it with this. If there's, if there's somebody out there going, hey, I want to be a musician, but music has changed so much. I don't even know where to start. Besides picking up an instrument and playing that, yeah. where do they start? Man, all right. So besides picking up the instrument and playing right. it, I would say don't try to be something that you're not. Just be yourself. If there's somebody out there, if you, you know, we all take influence from things, but just do you. Don't let people push you into doing something that doesn't feel right in your heart for one like it's it's been the coolest thing and i have man i've been in, in a lot of amazing bands and we've accomplished some amazing things together but it's not until i just stepped out of that and just got back to just being myself that it really started to click and work for me I know what he's talking about trust me i moved 2700 miles just so i could be myself yeah. so i get it so whatever it is you want to play, even if some people don't get it, that's okay. They're not your fans. You will gain your fans. You will, you will, you'll get there.
There is literally room for everybody at the top. You just have to work hard enough and market yourself and find the people that want you. Because guess what? You are good enough and people do want you. You just got to find them. Hey, man, if we were in China right now and we were a one in a million dude, there's like 1,800 of us. And that's a convention's worth. So what I'm saying is, is there's a lot of people out there. You have to be you. And the, let them find you because they will. All right, Mikey, thanks for taking time. Dude, should we show them this crowd? Yeah, let's do it. All right, they're all filing in now. All right, here we go. Don't make some noise. Come on, you don't make some noise. Hey, everybody! <laughs> 